Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with another video. Uh, this week I want to talk about one of the simplest, but probably also one of the most effective solutions that we have out there, and that's the map change request. Let's say at a utility you have a crew out in the field and they're just going about their daily business and they notice that there's a fire hydrant there by the side of the street, but it's not in the GIS. They want to report it back to the GIS analyst or editor to make sure that that asset is added. Now, at many organizations, you don't want the folks out in the field to maybe manipulating or adding or editing your authoritative GIS data, so you don't want them to collect a new hydrant, but you at least want them to record some sort of note to pass that information back to the office. Well, how might that be done now? At many organizations, that's done with uh, someone writing on a napkin or the back of an envelope, and maybe if you're lucky, that note finally makes its way back to the GIS editor, but many times you'll find that it doesn't make it. It just kind of gets you know, stuck in between the, the, the cushions on the truck or something like that. It doesn't really make its way. So how can we better communicate this information or send these map change requests from the field to the office? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to do it with ArcGIS Online using a template. So let's go ahead and dive in. And here we are in ArcGIS Online. So I'm currently in my content tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Create button here and choose Feature Layer. Now, if you've never been in here before, we do have a number of templates that can help you start to collect data from scratch uh, based on industry best practices that we've seen over the years. And it's broken out by different sectors, as you can see over here. So for example, if I'm in the water utility space and I want to get up and running with a particular process, it might be worth taking a look in here to see what data sets are available to us. So for example, here is a template for backflow inspection or hydrant inspection or drinking water advisory. Uh, worth taking a look in here to maybe use this for your own organization or start to use it to help generate some ideas. So there's some really great templates out there. I encourage you to take a look within your sector as well as other sectors as well. But for our purposes here today, I'll click on Show All and I'll look for Map Change. Press Enter. And we can see we have the template for Water Utilities Map Change Request. I'll select this and click Create. Now I'm going to be able to choose the sub-layers that are going to appear uh, within this uh, feature layer. Now if I want to, I can certainly come in here and actually rename these, uh, or I can pick and choose which ones I want or don't want by checking or unchecking the boxes. We can also add GPS receiver information or enable Z values if necessary. For our purposes, we'll just leave the defaults. And click Next. I can choose my area of interest roughly. I'll zoom into southeastern Pennsylvania and click Next. I can then give this a name, so map change. I can update tags, give it a summary, choose which folder I want to save it in, and press Done. And in a couple seconds, this will give us a new hosted feature layer with those four underlying sub-layers. And here we are. We're in the item details page for our new layer, map change with those four sub-layers. Uh, in the event you're not familiar how we got here, this is just simply in the content tab. Make sure you go to your folder where you just chose to save this new layer, and then click on the hosted feature layer. So to better illustrate what this actually looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at it within a map viewer. We can see over here on the left-hand side that we have those four sub-layers within this hosted feature layer, and we can begin to edit these or manipulate these as necessary. So for example, if I come in here to edit, we can see that again, there's my four different templates that I can choose from within this map change request layer. But notice it has these uh, green no's and red yeses in here. These are templates that exist within each of those sub layers. So for example, if I grab yes for water map change request, what exactly does that mean? Well, we can see that it has this critical yes already being uh, selected for us. So what this means is we can build out templates within this data set to make data collection be a little bit easier. That someone in the field uh, or even back at the office who might be working with this information can easily have some of these templates with default values already set. In this case, critical yes or no uh, for water, sewer, and stormwater map change requests. But what we also have over here is something a little bit more generic as well. That these have the same exact fields just that the critical yes or no hasn't already been filled out for us. Uh, but notice we also have some other drop-down values in here as well. So issue, um, asset, etc., just to make data collection a little bit easier. So people don't have to punch in values manually, uh, but rather that 
uh, folks will also have the ability to just choose a drop down list, making life a little bit easier. So that's how we can collect data here. Uh, since this web map might be used by folks out in the field, it might be uh, advantageous to go into some of these layers that maybe aren't necessary and remove them. So maybe I want this to be a little bit simpler. So I'm going to remove uh, the specific map change requests and just leave the more generic map change request down at the bottom. Uh, maybe quickly rename this. And then I can save this. We'll just call this uh, MCR for map change requests. Give it a tag, choose which folder I want to save it into, and click Save Map. So now if I want to, uh, I can access this exact same map on my mobile device out in the field. So here I am in Field Maps on my iPad or Android device, and I can tap on MCR that we see down there. It'll pull in my location. Uh, I can even see that other map change requests that we recorded through ArcGIS Online. Um, but for my location, again, pretending I'm that field crew who notices that missing fire hydrant asset, I can, at my current location, record a map change request for water, select from the drop-down that my issue is uh, asset is missing, the asset happens to be a hydrant, I'll say in my case here this is critical, take a photo with my mobile device, attach that photo, and press submit. So just like that, I've been able to deploy the map change request template, get it into a map, and make it accessible out in field maps. So if I come back in here into my web map in ArcGIS Online, just kind of zoom in to refresh the extent, we'll see there's that new point that came in in real time, the missing fire hydrant that's critical, and even see our photo as well. So just a real quick example of how we can go about deploying a very simple solution like this. So this might be only a couple of the components to it. So we have the data, we put the data in the map. The map can be accessible out in the field, but we also want to help people back at the office be able to keep track of these map change requests as they come in. Well, how can we do that? Well, I'm going to recommend something like an ArcGIS dashboard. So if we take a look at maybe what something like this might look like more fully developed, we can see we have our web map here with our different icons for water, sewer, and stormwater, but also being able to see how many we have in total, how many are critical versus not critical, uh, and the ability to quickly get drawn to these locations on the map and learn a little bit more about them. So remembering that all these different applications across the ArcGIS system can quickly work together. So we saw web maps, we saw field maps, and we saw dashboards. In the event that you want to learn more about ArcGIS field maps, you can check out the link down below to that video that I talked about in a different series. Or if you want to learn how to make a dashboard, there's also a video down below that's linked out to that. So again, this really powerful way that we can use just a very simple point layer to help us keep track of uh, changes that need to be made out in the field by field crews without them having to actually edit your authoritative data. So we took a look at uh, feature templates, we took a look at how we can deploy those feature templates and get them into a map. So I hope, as always, that this video was useful to you. And also, as always, thanks for watching.